Pela Kastafla, Nugu Am Nalaka, Namkayak Saman, Gayutlin Lahilis. Welcome everyone, my name is Donna Cranmer. I'm from the Namkis First Nation and I live in Alert Bay. And I'm going to show you how to spin a cedar rope bracelet today. So you should all have one of these and a piece of thread. What you're going to need, what you didn't get, is a string to tie the button off to the leg of your table or a chair or a doorknob. You just need to secure it somehow. Okay, so I'm tying my knot, tying around the leg of my table. So in the springtime, like right now, is when we gather cedar bark. And this cedar bark that you have in your kit has been thinned for you and cut for you and threaded through your button. So what you do is you have two, two um, sides and when we're spinning rope, we twirl in one direction. Both hands are going the same way and then you're gonna put your right hand over your left hand. So twirl, same direction, both of them are going the same direction, right over left, twirl, right over left. And you don't want your cedar bark flat. When you're twirling, you want it spun right up so you're spinning it. And um, I call it flipping. So spin, flip, spin, flip, spin, flip. And what happens when you let it go, if you're doing it right, it's not gonna come apart, right? If I wasn't doing it properly, it would all unspin. You want it to actually look like rope, the texture of what rope looks like or the visual. So it's just spinning and flipping. So this is a bracelet. Our people had to spin all the rope they needed prior to contact because there was no Walmart, no Costco. You had to pre prepare all of that stuff yourself. Fishing line, line to lash canoes together. And you're gonna spin all the way to the end. So keep spinning. Twirl, 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 and flip me that way. So you get to the end. You could even go right to the very tip. And then what we're going to do is untie the string. Undo the rope. <clears throat> and it's going to look like that, right? So then you're going to put it around your wrist. And I would need to spin a little bit more because we want to make a loop with our end part so that the button will fit through it. And then with the thread that you have, you're going to tie it off really nice and tight. But I need to just keep spinning to the end because I need it a little bit longer. So spin, flip, spin, flip. Make my loop. And then you're gonna just give yourself enough room so the button will fit through the loop. So you could go right to the edge to make it a little bit bigger if you need to. And got my thread. So this is two ply cedar string, right? There's three ply, there's four ply. It just means the number of strands that you're spinning with. So if you t if you go to museums and look at old neck rings. They're made with probably three or four ply, even more. Some, I think I've seen one that has seven ply. That means there's seven bundles of bark that are spun together. So not only was it used for daily use, this cedar rope, it was used for regalia. Headpieces, neck rings, wrist and armbands. Many, many, many things made with cedar. And this is just one. So then you want to um, cut that off because once it dries, it'll be stiff again. And that's what I forgot to tell you. You need to wet your bark before you start. So I have my bark soaking in the bowl there. Just warm water is good and it only takes a couple of minutes. It doesn't take long. Ta-da! One cedar bracelet. Okay? So... 
enjoy, have fun. You have two, you should be getting two kits. And then if you have more Bart, you could try maybe do a three strand or thinner Bart even, could make nice thin strands. Yeah, so have fun. Alakisla.